When a billion plus dollar company makes a mistake with their design, there's nothing left to do but fix it yourself. Welcome back to the channel. And if you haven't seen Gamers Nexus previous video regarding Intel's independent loading mechanism for the LGA 1700 socket, you may not be aware of the problem that I'm gonna be discussing today. When you install an Intel CPU into the LGA 1700 socket, you're gonna use the independent loading mechanism to lock the CPU into place. Now this independent loading mechanism will put uneven pressure onto the integrated heat spreader, which may result in bending or warping of that integrated heat spreader. This bending and warping will cause heat sinks and water blocks that have little to no pressure on portions of the IHS. This results in poor heat exchange and overheating CPU. If you aren't into overclocking and you're currently not experiencing overheating issues with your CPU, this fix may not be necessary for you. But since I'm running an Intel 13900K and I plan on overclocking, I wanted to get ahead of this issue before it even presents itself. To get ahead of the issue, I'm going to completely replace Intel's independent loading mechanism with this, Thermal Grizzly CPU Contact Frame. Let's get to it. So the Thermal Grizzly Contact Frame comes with the contact frame itself a package of hardware with an Allen key for installation, as well as another tool to remove the Intel ILM. So the first step is gonna be the removal of the ILM, which is the metal bracket that holds the CPU into the socket. So during this process, it's gonna be extremely important to protect the pins that are in the socket. So I'm gonna actually install the CPU into the socket and then remove the ILM. That way, none of the pins are exposed during installation. Also, please observe electrostatic discharge procedures. I'm wearing my ESD wristband while I'm doing this, and I would suggest that you do the same. So now I'm just gonna install the CPU. Now that the CPU is installed, we can go ahead and use the provided tool to remove the four screws in each corner to remove the ILM. So now that the ILM is removed, the bracket that's underneath of the motherboard that allows these screws to thread into will have fallen off and you're gonna have to hold it on with your hand as you install the CPU frame and the four screws. So I'm holding the bracket in place and I'm gonna put the CPU frame on top of the CPU. It can only go on one way. And then I'm going to start installing the screws for the CPU contact frame. So one trick is to back the screw up until it clicks into place and you know that you have threaded that screw into the hole properly. Once you've done that, turn it 90 degrees and move on to the next screw. Okay, still holding onto the bracket behind the CPU. All four screws are threaded in and they've been turned 90 degrees. So now I'm gonna go through and turn each screw in 90 degree increments in a crisscross fashion until they're snug. And then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so the frame is now tight. There's no play in it. The screws, I hit suck some snugness. So now I'm going to turn these screws one more 90 degree turn each, again in a crisscross pattern. And then I'm gonna go ahead and boot the system up and make sure it posts and that everything looks normal. So the next step is gonna be put thermal paste on and then push a heat sink down onto the CPU and just get the system to boot and go into the BIOS. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and boot it up and see if we can get it to post. Uh, 
Okay, so it's not posting right now, and we have an error code of 00, zero which is typically having to do with the CPU. So that just tells me that this is not tightened down far enough and we're not getting good enough contact on the pins in the socket. So we can go ahead and take this heatsink off and then we can tighten the screws down a little bit more and then retry this test. So I'm just gonna turn these another 90 degrees in a crisscross fashion. I'm gonna go ahead and put the heatsink back on. We're gonna try this again. Okay, we're getting the same error code, so we're just gonna go ahead and tighten it a little bit more. This time I'm gonna do 180 degrees because these screws are still feeling kind of loose. I just don't think that the CPU is getting full contact on the pins. And it looks like we're posting. It's going through memory training right now. Might take a little bit. So we see here it's posted. We're gonna hit F1 to run setup and just check the BIOS and make sure everything looks good. So even without tightening down the heat sink, you can see that our CPU temperature is just fine. We are recognizing memory frequency, our total memory, our processor, and our processor's base frequency. So now that we're booted and it's recognizing everything, I'm gonna run a couple restarts on it just to make sure I have reliable posting and recognition of these components and then I will call this good. So I booted the system three times and it's posted every single time with no issues. I've seen the hardware in the BIOS, everything looks good and correct. So this CPU contact frame is now installed. Again, this may be an unnecessary step if you're not seeing any overheating issues with your CPU, but dropping a few degrees off of your temperatures might result in quieter operation through lower fan speeds and overall using less electricity so you can be more efficient. But since I'm gonna be pushing alpha source to the limit, I thought this was a great way to get the most out of my cooling solution that I possibly could. Now that the CPU is installed with the contact frame, I'm ready to put on my EKWB water block and get this motherboard installed into the and Tech Canon. You can check out more Tectonic Systems videos by clicking here. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.